So is the Bible, the Bible, as it is called, B-I-B-L-E, you know, the quote, Holy Bible, but is the Bible a pacifist book? All right, there's a lot of talk in our community and among ones and ones concerning, oh, woo, 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 the Bible and so-called the Christian or rather the white Anglo-Saxon counterfeit Christianity, you know, the so-called Bible thing. You know, people say peace and love and a lot of even brethren, you know, it's about peace and love, peace and love. It's all about peace and love. And they'll say, well, that's the Bible. They'll say, that's what his majesty. Go to mind, we can mind how the Selassie is speaking about. But the glory of his majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So let's ask this question. Firstly, right, firstly, to those of the Beta Rastafari, right, for those of the family, you know, is the Bible a pacifist book? Now, firstly, is what do we say? How, how do we see this? Are, are we seeing eye to eye? Is the Bible a pacifist book or are some just ignorant or unlettered, unlearned? In other words, you may read well, right? You know, we can read something very well, but how well do we understand it? So from what we have read or what we have um, from familiarity, education, environment and experience, what say is thou? Because we know that many ones will say the Bible is a pacifist book. And in some ways, we actually agree that the Bible is based on their perception, their POV, based on your point of view, which is a faulty point of view. You know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, got to get like an eye test, you know, like been reading so much, sometimes poor light and everything. So sometimes we need, you know, maybe glasses or spectacles because our vision, you know, so what is our vision? You know, the vision, for the vision, the people perish or with the wrong or faulty vision. Right, a, a false vision, a false view, not a true view. Seen, sight, re, 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 u, see, see, seen. How do you see this? Is the Bible a pacifist book or are you ignorant? When I say ignorant, right, it's not to insult nobody because we all are ignorant about some things. You know, what's going on, say, behind my back, two blocks away, I, I don't really know. You know, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> you see, so, so I'm, I'm, it's ignosis, not knowing. So I can't say I know that without being, you know, a liar. So, of course, we all are ignorant with some things that we don't know. But is the Bible a pacifist book? We say nay. We say the Bible's not a pacifist. So the Bible's a book of war and violence. Well, we say nay to that as well. What do you mean we say nay to that? Well, it's as a Kohelet, Kohelet. <laughs> no, Kohelet is the, the preacher, Ecclesiastes. You remember Ecclesiastes? Right? There's a time and a season for all things. There's a time and a season for all things, for all things, for all things, if you please. Right? And that's the balance. Right? And the balance... Right? is conditioned based on the teaching of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, of good. Right? Good over evil, that's the balancing of the equation. Right? Remember the matrix, balancing the equation, right? That balancing of the equation. Good over evil. Give us the teaching of his divine magic. We don't want no devil's philosophy. So saying that the Bible is a pacifist book, that's based on counterfeit Christianity. Right? When we say counterfeit white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, which is really, it's kind of hypocritical Christianity. Right? Because we see that the way the so-called white man practiced Christianity right, to himself, what he called Christianity among himself, and the way he malpracticed it, right, or falsely taught it, or mistaught it to others, is two different things. It's like the difference between, like, you know, day and night. In fact, another topic is black people's bipolar Christianity. Maybe I'll have to say black people's bipolar wasp. Let me just write this in my note right here. Wasp, you know, for white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Now, notice this, that the wasp, you know, the wasp, the, the insect, the creature, the wasp, it looks just like the bee. It looks just like the difference between the wasp and the bee is that the bee make honey, right? And honey is good. I right? say so it bring us into a, a land, right? Like the consciousness, right? A land that floweth with milk and honey. So honey is good. Right? The bees make honey. Right? But the wasp, it look like a bee, but it not be a bee. <laughs> it may be another kind of bee, but it's not the bee right? that makes honey. But the wasp and the bee both look the same. 
right? Or rather, they looked similar. But similar is not the same. So in order to be able to discern the difference between a wasp and a bee, one needs a level of what's called, quote, understanding or discernment, right? So here we're seeking to exercise discernment, right? How do we see this? What's the point of view? Do we see it from the objective perspective? Subjectively, people have had experiences with the Bible and counterfeit Christianity. I'm talking about we, the black peoples, once lost, now found. We've had this experience, once lost, now found, with Christi counterfeit Christianity that's been very traumatic, right? Generational trauma. So when someone's in one talk about, oh, too churchy or too Bible, all this Jesus and God thing, you know, sometimes they're speaking real. And sometimes they're speaking the real as real as the Torah speaks. Now, when we say the Torah, let's get specific here. The Bible is just speaking generally overview, right? But let's get to the groundation, the first books of the scripture, that, that core, right? That foundation, that groundation. Here we have a Torah reading and feeding here for the 49th degree of I and I sabbatical study, RSS number 49. And it's known as Ki Tetze. Ki Tetze. Right? Ki Tetze. But what? Ah, Gize. Ki Tetze. When you go forth, right? When you go forth to war. So we started out just by sharing this right here, 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 right? Well, the real G is that the foreign government, right? Because the kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right? So when we're properly taught, we're properly discipled, we grow in grace and that knowledge of the King of Kings Christ, we recognize, we talk about the kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Shemaim, as it is in the heavens. We're talking about spookism. We're talking about establishing a government, right, as that higher that righteous government, not not no spookism, you know, in the sky, you know, after you die. That's the counterfeit Christianity, because even the Our Father prayer, right, tells you the Lord's prayer says, "Thy kingdom come." And the kingdom equals government. Take note, check, kingdom equals government. So, from the true perspective, right, of the Bible, even the New Testament, it's all about establishing, right, our own and the divine government. Right, it's about government. Right? This is the key for the once lost, now found. It's about government. Of course, we're talking about laws. Of course, you hear one talking about no justice, no peace. So the Bible is not a pacifist book. In fact, a lot of ones are very, very um, contradictory when they speak about like the Bible. A lot of our own people. right? Because we see right, in some ways how it has been manipulated or false. It's like when, when Christ, according to the Bible, when he spoke about the, the scribes and the Pharisees, he said that they had the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom, the scribes and the Pharisees, like the religious leaders and the, the established religion, religious Babylon, like, like even in our community. We talk about the black church, but we can't just throw out the baby in the bathwater. As um, Baba Dick Gregory had said, you know, we call him like almost like he's like a rabbi in a sense to us. You know, we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, especially when he says things like, well, the two strongest forces Right? or powers like in America, like this, this region, and perhaps in the whole world, is the um, black woman, <laughs> yeah, and the black church, the black church, right? And I look at the black woman and looking at the divine femininity, this now links us here with Torah. A lot of ones don't know that the Torah is our mother, right? According to the true Hebrew, my right, theological context, the Torah is our mother. That's why Proverbs, Proverbs 1 and 8 says, my, my son, Bene, my disciple, hear the instruction of thy father, the righteous patriarch, thy father forsake not the law, ha Torah, the Torah of thy mother, the Torah of thy mother, and wisdom, wisdom, she is the principal thing, Robeno Yeshua, ha Notri, right? Justice of Nazareth, Ha Moshiach, the Messiah, he says, what he says? Wisdom, right? Chokmah, which is she, right? Hebraically, right? Is justified by all of her children. So our father, her children, if wisdom has children, and we are those children of Talmudim, right? And she was there in the beginning with he who be who he be, then that be, right? According to the proper, the true um, to Wahido, the Hebrew theology, that be our mother. So you see, there's the principles that in counterfeit Christianity are covered up by the mistranslation and the counterfeit preaching, the white Anglo-Saxon philosophy, right? The devil's philosophy. So there's a philosophy that has been laid like concrete, right, over the true ground of what the Bible's really about. So when one say, well, the Bible's a pacifist book, well, 
responsive, not so, Ja Torah. But even if we look at the Bible with a, with a true point of view, a true POV, right? We see things, right, from he who be who he be way. We see things the true way. We look at it objectively, right? So here, the objective perspective, right? Overstanding the subjective perspective. So here, I'm speaking about Torah, right? Why do we begin with the groundation of Torah? Because of who we be. We, the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, of Judah, give us a teaching of his matter. For my part, I glory in the Bible. All right, so ye must be born again. You heard that before, right? <laughs> ye must be born again, be regenerated, right? Not degenerated. So counterfeit Christianity, the world flesh, satanics, the claw, the 400 years has caused us, the once lost, now found, to degenerate in their philosophies. Right? Give us a teaching of his majesty. So here's where for I and I as Rastafari, the teaching of his majesty. We have to study to show ourselves approved. We have to, in a sense, relearn. So we spoke about re-education, that other vid. We noticed that some ones and ones not really picking up on that. Like, share, and subscribe, brothers and sisters. And that video about re-education, that's the point still. That's like the proverbial... Um, we say the Ethiopian elephant, <laughs> right? That's in the room, right? But here for this Torah reading and feeding, not to go long on this, but we're going to take some of the, the, the topical themes, Chabarim, right? We're going to seek to address some of the topical themes, go over some of these topical themes, right? Here in this 49th degree of our sabbatical study, getting ready for the podcast and everything right here. But this particular reasonment, I've reasoned for a couple of brothers, right, and also a few sisters about this right here. And it's the reasoning here that is proper for this season. The reason, right, the reason in this season. To share the reason in this season. Wh why the reason in this season is so very important. What's the reason in this season? So we have key tates a. Key tates a, right? What is key tates a? Right? So we're looking at, this is our heritage right here. When we talk about um, Ethiopian Hebrew, the commandment keepers, the congregation of Elohim, Chayim. This is I and I roots right here. Right? Our, we can say our black American, but not just limited to black. When we say black American, we're talking about Yehuda, Judah. Right? And if you really understand who Judah is, then we have Benjamin, the Caribbean. But really, together they become one. You have to understand that in our true history. But you can only know that true history by studying it. So we wouldn't expect one to know it, right, if they have not become familiar with it, right? So this is why when Rovena Yeshua said to the scribes and Pharisees, like a lot of the pastors and preachers, not all, not all, not all. The most revolutionary force here for our people, for the lost sheep, the beta Israel of the West, has always been the, the black church, right, and the black woman. Mm -hmm. And we say the black woman... Let's put it in Torah context. The virtuous woman, right? The Eshet Chayel, the Oset Chayel, the woman of power. That means she's the woman of Jah Truth, right? She's the woman of the reality of he who be who he be. You, you know what I'm saying? She expresses that wisdom, that, that wisdom of the divine feminine aspect there, even in the beginning, right? With our Abba Father Elohim Ha'ab, right? So even there we have our father, our mother. Right in the divine, the Hebrew, Tawahido, the theology of it. Right as above, so below. Right, we could get into the scripts on it if you want some reference to the scripts. Well, I'll point to um, Psalm, uh, not Psalm, Proverbs, Proverbs four, four and seven in the Hebrew, which says, "Wisdom is the reishith." Right, connected with bereishith, the first Hebrew words in the beginning, and more of the detail in chapter eight. Right? Look at chapter 8 of the Mashal, Mishle Shlomo, right? where it speaks about wisdom, how she was there before, before the creation was created. She was there. She was with he. That is the mother, the mother wisdom that Robeno Yeshua, I and I Rabbi, right? the Rabbi of Rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, speaks of in the Brit Chadasha, what's known as the New Testament right? or the Renewed Covenant. Right? So here for this Torah reading and feeding, first of all, first thing first, no. Not pacifist. Not a pacifist book. Right? But it's not um what would be the antonym? <laughs> Why the opposite? All right, all right, all right. Yes, 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 all right, all right. Okay, passive we we had, we had to look it up. You know, okay, first it just didn't come to mind. Warmonger. 
right? The opposite, the antonym, the opposite of pacifist is warmonger. Neither is the Bible a warmonger book. The scripture is not a warmonger book, right? It's not a peacenik book, right? It's it's not a, it's, it's, it, you know, <laughs> well, that's a synonym right there. Yeah, the synonym. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the antonym is like a hawk. Jingos, right? Jingos. Interesting. Jingo, war hawk, warmongers, right? What's the opposite of pacifist? Right? The opposite of pacifist, like a book of force or foul play or violence, right? It's not a book of that. It's not a warmonger book. It's not a war hawk book. It's not what we do have in time and in season, you know, all things in its right season, the reason for the season. So some get it twisted, you know, some get it twisted, some get it out of balance. You know, like some say that we as black people, we are left-brained. You, you hear some people say, no, they say we're right-brained. That's what they like to say. We're right-brained, emotional, intuitive, you know, like music and, you know, pacifist things. You know, the, the right brain seems to be that pacifist hemisphere, right? But then we also have the logical, the analytical hemisphere, right, which is referred to as the left brain. And since so there, there needs to be a balance, Right, that balance, right? You know, and the divine balance is good over evil. Do good, do good. Seek peace and pursue her. Yes, seek peace and pursue. <laughs> yes, and per all this is in Torah when we study, especially when we get into our language, our linguistics, right? When we reverse the curse, right, of counterfeit Christianity, when we reverse the curse of how to make a so called slave. You know, or the Woolly Lynch paper. One of them was control language, was to take from us our language. So we have to gain that opening of the mouth, right? That opening of the mouth. But first, to begin with the opening of the ear, Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. Right. So here, here, here. Let's touch on a few things right here. Like going, just going back to our roots. Right. Notice the the flag in the background. Right, someone said the Israeli flag, but this is 1929, brothers and sisters. I want I want you to check, take note. Not 1948. This picture you're seeing right here, 1929. Right, the Moorish Zionist temple of the Moorish Jews, the Moor connection with the Moab connection. That was the last land that they were on before they crossed the Yardain and entered into the land. Right, and that aspect of the trod of the movement. Well, yeah, there is more. You could say war hawking there. Right? Yeah, we have to admit there's more war harking there. Like even in these Torah reading and feedings here, right? Especially during the last, um, the last uh, seven Shabbats of the year, Hebraically speaking, as we're coming into the what's called the fall festival season, the third of the Shalosh Regalim, the pilgrim festivals, namely the Day of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, Rosh Hashanah, and then we have Yom HaKippurim. We like to say the fullness from Torah, not Yom Kippur. In Torah says Yom HaKippurim, right? the Day of the Atonements. And then we have the seventh and fulfillment here for the Holy Ecclesiastical, the Hebrew Churchical year from the first moon to the seventh moon here in season with the Chag Ha Sukkot, with the Feast of Tabernacles, which corresponds right in the Ethiopian Kingdom of God and in, we could say, within the Holy Messianic sense, right? we have the finding of the true cross, right? And also the true season for the birth, right? This is the true season we're coming up on the birth of Robeno Yeshua, Yeshua HaNotri, Justice of Nazareth. This is the season, this is the time and how it corresponds with tabernacles. Remember the word became flesh and dwelt in tabernacle, just as the word must become flesh, must incarnate in I and I. As we said, to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our meodeka, with all of our muchness, all of our enoughness, with all of our might, right? Spirit, soul, and body. Man is the trinity. The true trinity is the Hebrew trinity. Hashilush HaKadosh, Baruch Baruch Hashem. But here, just to give a couple of points on why the Bible is not a pacifist book and beginning to address this particular um, subject matter. It's a very important subject matter. Few ones was telling I and I that among some of the Rastafari communities online, this has been a hot subject matter. All right, you know, one's been talking about it. Some pro, some against, some this, some that. Right, but first of all, let us go to the teaching, right, of Elohim Ha'ab, the teaching of Ababa John Hoy, the teaching of His Divine Majesty. For my part, I glory in the Bible. So that glory. If we as Rastafari, and that's the name of Ketamawi Hadassah, we as Rastafari glory 
right even in that name which is that name of him right then we must keep to his glory if we are true witnesses right if i'm a witness of somebody and they stated this is their perspective right and i verify that truly what is said that they said we can prove because there's a lot there's a lot of false memes out there that's being circulated concerning his imperial majesty but there's a lot of true memes as well this means that we have to do our own due diligence right and study right to shoot right i and i selves approve so right here 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 and teach it to our children right this is i and i roots just want to point that out this is i and i roots so right here let's go to the torah to the law right and to the testimony as it says in yeshaya yeshayahu if they speak not like this there's no light no illumination in them we don't know blind leading the blind and we don't want to be led by the blind so we need to see seen sight re re u ru re re speaking to all of us as one man re re the hebrew to see re u all of y'all see seen debarim deuteronomy chapter 21 and 10 it says when thou this is this 49th this is the key word here for this 49th sabbat sabbatical study here where we're at right here in this 2022 20, year right as we are about like six days before ethiopia kingdom of god adis ahmed new year right ethiopia kingdom of god new year and, and we're here also heading into the, the the hebrew judaic the line of the tribe of judah our our holy new year but we have september 11th right the adis ahmed that's a civil new year that's why we see how rosh hashanah right corresponding with the yom teruah the day of trumpets it initiates right this fall festival season or the third of the three times in the year where all of the males right zikur right zikure right of yisrael are to appear in the place that he who be who be sets his name and for us in the brit hadasha in a new covenant that's in spirit and in truth so in spirit and in truth y'all right grab your pen your paper your sac sacred scripture right the holy scriptures and bring a willing and a a repentive and attentive right mind right here 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 shema yisrael when thou goest forth to war uh oh this is in the bible right this is the bible it says when you go forth to war right and ones will say well that's the old testament you know there's some of these um call them half asses right you know, they since the new testament not the old testament or even vice versa got to speak this to my fellow hebrews and israelites and i think many of the mature understand and understand what we're speaking about this they say well well that's the old testament because they say well the old testament god was an angry god and a violent god and he authorized genocide and massacre of people so forth and so on well yeah yeah you want to chat on that you want to come let us reason on that so we can better understand and understand that I mean, in studying ancient civilization, we find this in ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet. They fought against people, right? They killed people, right? There were some things that could be considered from the point of view of the victims as massacres, but there might be reason for that, right? If there's a bunch of corrupt people doing bad and corrupt things, right? If you don't defend yourself, right, or defend the innocent, you do wrong. You do wrong, right? No cowards, as I said. No cowards, because of the cowards... You know, that, that's a no-no. That's a violation of HaTorah, right, of the Torah. That's why it says, do these things, right, and we will live by them, right? We will live by them. So when we have to do those things in order to live, and it requires the more so-called um, forceful reaction, the, for, the valiant, we have to be valiant. I didn't say violent, but valiant, right? The Chayil, in the Hebrew, is known as Chayil. The Chayil in that same verse in the scripture is the very same as we have in the royal Amharic in the book of the seven seals of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah right into the Pearl Majesty's Bible how the Selassie's Bible that's Chayil too so the word Chayil is a Hebrew word right we shall do valiantly now having more time we'll go through those areas of script but here this is to make this point because we can bring this out here in the season because here we're at this particular Torah reading and feeding this particular Torah reading and feeding when thou goest forth to war against thine enemies. Even the New Testament, for the New Testament, people say, well, that's the New, that's the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament, no longer the Old Testament. It's not about Moses, blah, 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 blah. Okay. No, no, no. I agree with some of that, but let's go to the specifics. Does not the Brit Hadash, the New Testament says, right, about being, 
a good soldier. All right. Now, now you see, some would like to kind of spiritualize that. Right. Well, the spirit has to be within the temple. The spirit should be at the heart of the matter. Right. That's the matter right there. The spirit should be at the heart of the matter. Hold on right here, 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 brothers and sisters. OK, let's just do this right here. Let me just do this. Pray to I pray to I. Um. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so apologies right here, brothers and sisters. Just doing something right here. We had. Yeah, we had a situation, right? And we're just trying to work out this um, situation right here, right? Trying to work out this situation, right? Yeah, because we're just going to bring up that particular verse right there on one of our phones, right? But we had a situation. You know, some of y'all know the technologies, you know, be having their situations, right? But the scripture says, even in the New Covenant sense, right? In the New Testament sense about being a good soldier, why? About being a good soldier. And let's just say that right there as well. Like being a good soldier of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right? So what does it mean to be a good soldier? Right? And it also speaks about fighting the fight. Right? Fighting the fight. Now, many counterfeit Christians, they will say things like, well, well, um, that's supposed to be a spiritual warfare. We don't like fight against flesh and blood. No, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Right? Even when, when we are in the fight, even in the Torah right here, if you recognize what the Torah is saying, right, the, he's the same. Hashem, Yahweh, right, Yahuwah, Elohim Ha'ab, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the One, Yahuwah Echad. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. So it was spiritual, it was spiritual even there. See, we have to recognize that it was spiritual, you know, it was spiritual even, you know, even back there, right, it was spiritual. What do we mean by that? It was spiritual even back there, right? Because it was him being in us, right? He said he will walk in us. He will move in us. He will move through us. So all those verses that you like, like from in the New Testament, most of them are verses from the Old Testament, especially the prophecies. So the so that which is the Brit Chadash, the renewed covenant for Kol Yisrael is based on the Old Covenant. Now, we went through a time and a dispensation, right, where we would be under the Gentiles. All of that was prophesied, too, and that he would turn to the Gentiles. All that was prophesied. He would graft them in. All that was prophesied, right? But they are wild olives, and this is our native tree. This is why many of us, you know, once we, you know, turn to the truth, we find that, wow, you know, it, this fits us. Now, I'm not saying it fits all. It might not fit all. Right? Because maybe they don't have that 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 neshama, that that nefesh, you know, that that you know, that spirit, that soul within them. You know, you know, maybe they are not I and I people. It says not all who are of Yisrael. They be maybe our color but not our kind. They may be our skin folk, but not our kin folk, spiritually speaking. Right? So there's there's numerous verses in the New Testament. That was Second Timothy. Yeah, Second Timothy two and three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Now notice how the European, the so called white man, the Gentile, right, the Anglo American, Anglo European, how he right, how he in his times of, of the gen times of the Gentiles, how he armed up in his Christianity. But then he teaches to the to the um to the down press or to his captives, to those who get captured by him. Right? Remind me of that verse in Timothy where it talk about, you know, um, you know, being captured, you know, by the will of the devil. <laughs> I don't know if you know that verse right there. You know, being captured by the it's 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 in the same chapter, Second Timothy chapter two. Right? Second Timothy chapter two, where it says it says, and the servant of, of Yahweh, of Adonai, must not strive, but be gentle to all, apt to teach, patient. So that's the more peaceful aspect. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. We check that. In meekness, we instruct those. So it may seem like they're opposing. We speak the truth and they say, nah, 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 nah. But because we're in the spirit of this word, this word incarnated in us, we know that they're not opposing us. They might think they're opposing us. They might even want to oppose us, but they're only opposing themselves. That's why in meekness, in that spirit, instructing those that oppose themselves, if Elohim, if the power, the Almighty, Hilehim, peradventure, perhaps will give them repentance 
give them a change of mind to the acknowledging of the truth. This is a deep area of the scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. We're getting instruction. The, the top of the chapter says, might endure hardness as a good soldier. Not a warrior. See, a warrior will fight because he's a fighter. Sometimes you're just fighting for survival. Sometimes you're just fighting because, you know, tribulation does things to people over time. You know, we have a duty of care to one another. We do. Right? And the, the care is the truth, is the word of truth. And, and to, to hear is to receive that care. So if Elohim peradventure will give them repentance. So they are saying that like God has to give them repentance. So some people can't change their mind or think differently unto Elohim. And we are that minister. So even in the spiritual level, having that patience with our fellows, recognizing that they might have been through other kind of psychological traumatic situations in this here Babylon. Right. And recognizing that, yeah, we're not perfect. Right. But we are and should be perfecting it. Right. Perfecting practice makes perfect. Right. Practice make perfect. But here it says this right here and that they may recover themselves. All right, we're still in 2 Timothy chapter 2, that they may recover themselves out of the sneer of the devil. Well, now in the Hebrew is hasatan, mastema. Right? Of the adversarial mind. The satanic was the adversarial way of thinking. Right? They, they may recover themselves. So there's a duty for one to recover themselves. The truth, you must recover yourselves out of the sneer of Hasatan, the world of flesh, the satanic seclora. That means also for us that counterfeit Christianity and everything for no matter how many years before we come to the light of the King of Kings Christ. You come to that light of Rastafari and Amari Hadis Selassie. See, that light is the truth of the Bible. For my part, I glory in the Bible. And when he says, my advice to all, right, is to fulfill the Ten Commandments, right? That's what helps you to recover yourself out of the sneer, the trap, the trick trap of the world flesh, satanic seclora, right? Who are taken captive by him at his will. So now, I know I'm kind of segueing here and there, you know, but these things need to be connected. Now, the verse before you, I hope you took a moment, pause it, read over it. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, Yahweh Eloheka, he who be who he be, thy Elohim, thy Hayal, thy power, hath delivered them into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive. Now, we just point to this right here, because this is where we begin with this 49th degree of I and I sabbatical study. Right, this is just where we begin right here, here in this season, right, the reason for the season. So here we're like in the fifth Shavua, right, fifth, six, seven. So we got like about two weeks, right, coming up at the fullness right here. We got two weeks, right, before we come into the Hebrew High Holy Days. And this will correspond, right, with the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews with the High Holy Days, right, for the Israelites of Ethiopia. Right, and those who are in the true church and the professing, right, Ethiopian Tawahido Church, the church of his majesty, the church of he, according to Revelation chapter 3, he who have the key of great King David, right, and give thanks, I think it was Micah, heal up Micah, right, Micah had made a mention of that and we had to comment on that because he mentioned about, you know, opening and shutting and the one who has those keys to open and shut because some don't really see these things. But remember what it says to us in 2 Timothy, you know, that advice that, that Rabbi Shaul, a.k.a. the apostles to the Gentiles, Paul is given to his disciple, right, um, Timothy, Timotewos. Remember, we say he's like Bar Marley, right? How is he, you know what I mean? How is he like Bar Marley? Well, he's like Bar Marley in the sense, right, because um, he has a Hebrew or a Jewess. Right? You're, you're, you're a Jew if your mother's a Jew. So we look at Bob Marley's mother. She's one of our people. Right? Admittedly so. You know what I'm saying? And therefore, right, he's a Jew. That's, that's how Timothy was. But his father was, you know, was not, we would say, ethnically. You know, he was a Greek. You know, we say his father was white, in other words. But his mother, you know, was a true, you know, believer. You know, she gave credit. She trusted in the word. She was faithful. You know what I mean? So that's... That, that's like, proverbially speaking, that's like that seed of the woman. If you understand the scripts, like the seed of the woman. Yes, the woman has a seed. It's right there in the scripture, the B-I-B-L-E. All right? So it says right here, this is just a go forth to war. So that should dismiss the fact we're getting instruction commandments. All right? And it's elsewhere, especially here in the fifth book of Moshe, but throughout, you know, the five books of HaTorah, we have direction instructions for time of peace. My, for time of war, 
all right for time of peace for time of war let's show you this right here because this is the segue right here let's go back to the previous chapter chapter 20 right we have war laws here in chapter 20 not having the time to go through the the details it says when thou goest out to battle right to battle right to the milchama 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 what is milchama milchama like milchama the sense of fighting battle the engagement generally it's war warfare battle fight and you see war and warrior so you recognize when we say we're warriors right in that in that covenant keeping of the king of kings christ truly right one is a warrior but when we come together we recognize as warriors together we function as a soldier as an army so there's rules and regulations according to the glory of his majesty and here we're at the foundation of foundation what's interesting is that the fit and the guess you hear some rise talk about the fit and the guess well, if you read the fit and the guess, ones will say, oh, I'm not dealing with the Bible, even the King James Bible. I'm dealing with the Ethiopian, these translation documents that like fit and the guess. You read and study the fit and the guess, the good one that I think it was um, Frontline Books published a very good one, uh, one of the official ones in the reprint on the fit and the guess. All the quotes, the, uh, many of the quotes, enough of the quotes there refer to the Torah, refer to the Brit HaYashana. Why? Because... The Israelites of Ethiopia, remember the roots? David had a son named Solomon, Solomon had a son named David, those 12,000, the Ark of the Covenant, the Levites. So there's that groundation. We had a kingdom, right? We had a kingdom in the tops of the mountain. That's why the scripture says in Psalm 87, verse 4, with Ethiopia, this man was born there. So when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and the people more than thou, be not afraid of them. These are the rules of engagement. So why would Yahuwah, Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name. Why would He give us rules of engagement for war if He wanted us just to be pacifists? Why would He do that? Even in the Brit Hadash, the New Testament sense, say to be good soldiers. Mm -hmm. And to fight the fight of faith. Exactly. But let's ask ourselves see, see they're going to be hypocrites with us. We're going to say, oh, are we talking about war? Violence? No, we're talking about balance. We're talking about balance. Do not people have a right to defend themselves? Come on now. They know, <laughs> talk black, beta Israel to me. Right? Talk black, beta Israel to I, and I, and I, and I, to Yadin. Right? Talk black to I, and I. <laughs> do, do not we have the right to defend ourselves? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the POV and the perspective is important. Right? What's so interesting is like many of our black people here in this North country, the Americas, you know, have spoken about, well, isn't it interesting? Right? Isn't it interesting how we will be called to fight in in their wars right but then when we have a war situation even amongst them they will expect passive passivity from us they say oh you a christian right so that means that we should be hit upside our head not even not even in the christian sense and that's why we say what dick gregory said is true the strongest force of the black church. Now, of course, we can look at church and think I just mean this New Testament thing, but for we as Beta Israel, even that black church is the assembly. It's like the church in the wilderness, the wilderness of right, North America. Right? This is this wilderness we're in. Have you not heard? This is the wilderness of North America. And we're in the wilderness, like the Israelites were in the wilderness. Remember, they was in the wilderness for like 40 or so years. We talk about 400 years. Remember what Josh said? He said seven times seven. The more we went astray from Yahweh, truth and life, right? From the way, this is the way, but we went astray from the way, right? The punishments, the down pressions we will go through because we virtually lost our black beta Israel mind. We, we, we lost our mind. We lost our, our, our God-given. And what's our God-given? It's that Torah that was given. It's our God-given mind. So the, so the Torah... Right, which is the core of the Bible, right? And we're inclusive of of the Old Testament, so-called, the apocryphal books of 400 years between Matthew and Malachi, right? And the Brit Hadash, right? And also many of our people's extra biblical writings. We talk the Book of Enoch, but that's also part of the apocryphal. But the Book of Jubilees, right? And other such items, right? So here, 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 we have to teach the youths, right? Teach the children, teach the youths, right? Teach our children. So the Bible is not a pacifist book, mm -hmm. but it's a book of wisdom, right? Because in some time, right, at some times you have to be wise as what? As serpents, <laughs> right? 
Why is that serpents harmless as doves? Now I know some people say, oh, whoa, 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 that's the devil. See, you're under a counterfeit Christian, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, right? Wrong perspective, right? You have a wrong perspective. You're looking at this the wrong way, right? You're seeing blind. You never heard that? Like you're seeing, you're seeing, but you're not really seeing, right? That's why even Yeshua says, you know, seeing, seeing, but they don't perceive, hearing, hearing, and they don't understand. Right? Their hearts are not converted, therefore they can't be saved. Right? They can't be saved. The Savior is not going to save them. And they can't recover themselves out of the sneer of Hasatan. And they're taken by, they're taken captive by him. Right? As it says, come out of her. You see in the Chazon Yohanan called the, the vision of John, aka the revelation of John, St. John the Divine, some people call it, but we call it the Chazon Yohanan. Right? You know, it speaks to us. Right, it speaks to us in this way. Come out of her, right? Come out of her. You know, there's two she's, right? There's the har, the whore, the harlot. That's a counterfeit psyche, the counterfeit soul. And there's the true soul of John's soul people, right? So we have to teach our children, right? It's really amazing when we look over our history. Our people were learning, you know, Amharic, you know, back in the 30s, you know, and then also Hebrew back in the 30s. You know, we learned these languages, Hebrew and Amharic. This is why we put the Hebrew and Amharic first and foremost, right? And we even say, right, along with learning the basics of the Amharic, we have to get into our Torah reading and feedings and learn what His Majesty, Haile Selassie, says that the Hebrew is a Meseratawi Kwankwa, right? That foundational language. Right? And in his translation of the Bible, keeping with what it says in the Torah, that a king that sits on the throne, right, the Israelite, the Hebrew, and especially the throne of David, right, must copy out from what the priests, the Levites have, the scrolls, right, and write it in a book. This is where we have Revelation 5.5. 5. And we talk about Hala Selassie Bible, the King of Kings Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals. Like some of our Yehudi, our, our fellow Yehudi, you know, Jews from other mothers, you know what I'm saying? They may refer to the Aramaic. We do too, right? The Aramaic as a Targum, an interpretation to help us understand some of the archaic Hebrew. We refer, right, to the Metzav Kedus, to His Majesty's Bible, also as a point of reference. Right, because we have our own Talmud. No, not the Babylonian, right? But there's also the Jerusalem and the Palestinian, but we have the Ethiopian, the teaching, right? That Ethiopian Hebrew, that royal order teaching. And books like the Kevr Neges, we study it. See, a lot of people don't study it and they'll make a lot of false, you know, false um, correspondences, like false stuff. You know, they'll see a lot of false things because they're not really studying the detail. They see, you know, they see the big picture or they're trying to look at the big picture view, but they're missing the details. Right? The missing the details. Let's share this particular detail right here. Now, chapter 20 of Deuteronomy is known as the um, the war laws. Right? The war laws. The, the, the Torah. Actually, it's the Torah of Milchama. Right? So what we have here is the Torah of Milchama. What do we mean, Chabarim, when we say the Torah of Milchama? We're talking about the law of warfare. Right? Basically, it's what ones and ones will say when they say the rules of engagement. You know, like if any of you are in the military or you like these military documentaries and films, you probably heard them talk about the rules of engagement. Right? So before we even engage the enemy, there are rules and regulations. Right? So we have our divine rules and regulations. And the spirit of HaTorah, right? The spirit of the Torah, right? Is applicable to even the spiritual levels of the warfare, right? Even in what ones might refer to as the Brit Chadash, the New Covenant sense, right? Because we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? That's why the first word it says, when you go out to battle against thine enemies and see his horses and chariots and the people more than you, more than thou, more than I and I, be not afraid of them. So you see, you see the spiritual, I mean, let me show you the spirituality in this verse, right? Be not afraid of them, right? Fear is a spirit. Check. So to be not afraid of them is a certain spirit of heart and mind that we have to have. A certain spirit of heart and mind because fear is a spirit. Right? And this is in our power. We're talking about recover ourselves out of the snare of the devil. Right? To be overly fretful and fearful right? of the flesh is a carnal mind. And to be awfully fearful and fretful of the flesh. Like it says, why do you fear a man that can die? 
right? So the ones who say, well, we can die and well, that he can die too. You know, why should we be afraid of him? We have to go higher, take it higher, take it to the spiritual, you know, precept. But not the spiritual precept like we spook it out. But when one is not afraid, it has a real world effect on their behavior and their action, right? Their state of heart and mind, right? So it says, be not afraid of them, right? So if you miss that word, if you're still afraid of them, after you heard, don't be afraid of them, you have a, spirit, a psycho spiritual condition you got to work out. You got to work out your salvation because you're not going to be saved because the word says, right, you're going against the commandment is be not afraid of them, but you're afraid of them. You see, this is the objective. This is the real perspective, right? For Yahweh Loheka is with thee. Look at that. He who be who he be, our power is with us. That's that Emmanuel. We say Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel means with us. El, El is Ha El, Hail, Hail, the power. Hail him, Eloheka, Eloheinu. He is with I and I. That means he's with us, right? He's in us. Right? Know ye not that your bodies are the temple? If this spirit, right, his spirit, that spirit of heart and mind is with us. Right? So he's walking us and moving in us, having a being in us. Right? So this is all this is whole thing. Even the true laws that were given in Ha Torah were spiritual. This is why many of the Israelites couldn't keep it. It wasn't just about banging. Like people think like just banging or fighting. Right? I mean, anyone know any bad boy gangster out there? When I say gangster, I'm talking about in the in the inclination to the good sense. You, you all know, right? You know, that it's, it's not always easy. You know what I mean? It, but it's necessary, <laughs> right? Yahuwah Eloheka is with thee. Because some will be like, well, we, there's never no reason for war. It, it, it does, that, that's not what, what, what he says. Because people will be misunderstanding his master's teaching because they're not in his glory, right? They, they don't have the, 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 the general education. They're trying to get into special and higher themes, you know, but they don't have the general. It's like you're trying to take up going to, to trigonometry and geometry, right? And, you know, or even algebra, and you're not good at basic adding and subtracting. You got to get that strong in multiplication, right? You got to do basic math, and then it goes up in grades, right? You know, in grades, right? In season, in time, step by step, right? There's an order, right? So he who be who he be who brought thee up, right? Notice that word, brought thee up, right? That's the Allah, Allah. Allah, not Allah, not Allah, but Allah, Allah, it's so Ain, right, Allah, Aliyah, right, to go up, to ascend, because Egypt, or Mitzrayim, Kemet, is, is a lowland, right, we actually had to ascend, we had to go up, right, we had to go up, me Mitzrayim, right, and so here, it goes on, it gives the instruction not to go into all the details right here, right, you know, it says, it shall be when you come nigh near to the battle. So when we're coming near to the battle, ha kohen. So look at how the, the, the order of Yisrael, so the priest, the kohen, who is the Mushiach, the kohen is like the Christ, even in the camp, even in the Hebrew Old Testament, because he's the one who's anointed. The only one that's anointed in the camp is the, is the high priest, like Aaron and his sons. You see what I'm saying? So the priest... So that's like the position in the new covenant sense of Moshiach, Yeshua, why right, shall approach and speak to Ha'am, speak to the people and shall say to them, Hear, O Yisrael, Shema, right? Hear, O Israel, y'all approach this day to battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Check, that's a commandment. Don't allow your heart to faint. You, so, so there's no need of saying, Oh God, help me, let my heart not faint. Because you got to take responsibility. It's your heart. One heart, but it's your heart, right? Cause your heart not to faint. Cause your heart not to, 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 to rakak, right? To be soft, weak. So in other words, in the Rastafari sense, don't cause your heart. Don't be weak hearted. Don't be fearful. Don't be timid. Now nah, weak heart, right? Rastaman say, now nah, weak heart. I, our other Israelite brothers say, no cowards. Don't be weak hearted, right? Fear not. And do not tremble. Don't quake. Neither be y'all terrified because of them. Don't be terrified because of them. Now, many ones might say, well, if you ever felt fear and haven't overcome that fear, right? When you haven't overcome that fear, you figure like, it's like, you, what can you do about it? Because the adversary, the satanic mind is telling you can't help yourself, but you can, right? Shema'ah, 
Yisrael. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Achad, and he is with us. No spook God, he is with us, he'll be with us. And he said he'll be in us, he'll walk in us and amongst us, right? If we might open the door to Shema for Yahuwah Eloheikem, is he that goeth with you? Look at, he's going with us. He said, well, where is he? I don't see him. Right? You, you don't have a spiritual eye to see. You're blind spiritually. You don't see him in your spirit. Right? You, you're in the flesh. You're in the deadest. You're in the carnal. You're in the carnal mind. Right? I and I not want no carnal mind. Right? I and I not want no carnal mind. Yes, I. <laughs> Rastafari. Now, I just got to say this. I, you, you probably hear my voice, you know, a little joy. Got the ancient mysteries of Melchizedek right here by Melchizedek Y. Lewis. Heal up, heal up. I and I, sister Machida's, um, her, her ish, her ish, you know, ish shall ha. I, this is a book right here. Some of you might know this book, but, you know, got this copy here. Hopefully we'll follow up, right, you know, more on the, you know, the Hebrew for Rastafari and, you know, um, yes, yes, I, I and I niche, so to speak, as the sister said, you know, Rastafari Yehudi, Rastafari Israelite, Rastafari Yisrael, right? We're not talking about the 12 tribes organization, we're talking about we're going to the real roots, right? The real groundation, right? For Yahuwah Elohechem is he that goeth with you to fight for you. Look at what he said, he is fighting. So, so check this out, we're on the battlefield, right? Not fearing, not letting our hearts faint. You know, or be afraid or trembling because of that. We recognize he is with us and we go out there, we put in that work, right? But it's him that's working in us, right? To fight for you against your enemies. To do what? To save you. You see that word right there? The H3467 to Yasha. Yasha. What is Yasha? Yasha. Yasha is the root of Yeshua, right? To save, to deliver. Right? But it also means to be saved in battle. Look at it. So a lot of times you hear about salvation and people think about salvation, they say it's just like a spiritual thing and they kind of spook it out. But salvation has a real world level. It's like we in a battle against our enemies who hate I and I, right? And we beat them and we win. We were saved. We received Yeshua, Yeshua. We were victorious, right? Victorious. So there's many levels, right, of that. Command is a tripartite, man is a trinity, spirit. We can be saved on the spirit level, psychologically on the soul level, on the physical, the health level, or some danger, or even on our material wealth level. Right? We receive Yesha, Yeshua, and Yeshuo, victory. So the word in the Hebrew many times is plural, Yeshuot, because yeah, salvations, manifestation of Yeshua, that word that becomes flesh, that word that becomes manifest. Right, even in our 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 so-called through through our carnal and temporal liberty, but that's because of the true spirituality of His Divine Majesty, right? And then it goes on right here, and it says, "And the officers shall speak." Right, the officers speak. Basically, at first they say, "Well, whoever had a new house, go and dedicate it, lest you go to battle and you die." And then somebody else dedicates your house. If you have a, a vineyard, go and you know plant and eat of it. So there's exemptions also for the soldiers. Like if you have something new, go and deal with that. You, you betroth a wife. You have a wife and you haven't taken her. You haven't consummated it. Let that man go and return to Beito, his house, lest he die in the battle. And another man will take her. That's the order right there. You know what I mean? So he need to go take care of his business. And then it says this in verse 8. And the officers will speak further to Ha'am, the people, Jah people, and she'll say, What man is there that is fearful? Or faint-hearted, remember, weak-hearted, is fearful or weak-hearted, let him go. Let him leave the soldiers. So it doesn't even say that everybody got to go, even the weak heart. No, the weak heart, maybe you just go back home, just try to protect the home front. Right? Let him go and return to Beito. But look at the reason. Lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. So this is a command here. So if one is weak hearted, listen, you could, you know, just, just withdraw, go home for a moment. Because if you go out there and you express weak hearted sentiment, you might make your brother's heart weak. So overstand that relationship of one member to the next member in the body of the King of Kings Christ. Overs, overs. So right here, here, here. We scroll down right here. Notice what it says right here. And it shall be when the officers, the Shotarim, have made an end of speaking to Ha'am, Jah people, that they shall make captains of the armies. Right? The Tzava. Tzava, Tzaba, Tzaba'a. The Tzaba'ot. We say Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Tzaba'ot. 
right? Jehovah of armies, he who be who he be of armies, to lead your people. So then there's an order of the captains, right? The Sars, the Sarim, the Sar, right? Right? Yisrael, right? Yisrael, the Sar, right? The Sar of El, that prince, that ruler. Remember, it goes to our very name as Beta Israel, as Yisrael, as Yasharallah. Right? But notice this right here. Just get to this, to this verse right here. Because it's a whole peace point. We'll pick up on this peace point right here. Alright? On the peace point. Because once you hear about peace, peace and love, you hear many guys and gals talk about, oh, peace is all about peace and love. But they don't know job peace. It says the way of peace, they have not known the way of peace. Have you not read? Have you not heard in the scripture when it speaks about the way of peace? Right? The way of peace. They have not known, right? You know, the way of peace, right? The way of peace. I know there's something. Yeah, I have to update my, my link right here, but I should still have this verse right here. Like the way of peace, right? The way of peace they have not known, right? That song, well, that's actually Isaiah 59. Also, is found elsewhere, but Isaiah 59 and 8. The way of peace they know not. And there's no judgment in their goings because they go against the teaching of his master, the B-I-B-L-E, against his glory. They have made them themselves like crooked paths. They go crook-hearted, right? Because their heart is not right with he who be who he be is divine master. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. So if you follow, you're not going to know peace. You're going to hear people talk about peace, but you're not really going to know real peace. You're going to hear peace. You know, what do you mean peace? What kind of peace? You talking about peace? You mean P I E C E? Not the real peace. So peace, right? Shalom. Remember when Yeshua says, He says, He says, um, His peace He gives us, His shalom He gives us, Shalom Lakem He give us, not as the world give us, right? And don't think that He come to bring, you know, you know, peace in the way of the world, but come to bring the sword because sword is a debre. Elohim is the word of the power. It's the word of the true good, the true God. Right? So notice this word right here in Deuteronomy 2010. Right? It says, And when thou comest nigh, when you come near, right? The Karab, Karab, you know, Krav Maga, Krav Maga, Karav, Karab. Right? When you come near, right, to a city to fight against it, right? Then proclaim shalom to it. What? So we come near a city, the first thing we proclaim to them is shalom, right? So this even shows that we are not to be all turned up, like, yeah, 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 we just want to kick ass, and we just want to just kill somebody. No, it's not even... A, so these, these are our rules of engagement. We proclaim shalom. And it shall be if it makes thee an ants of shalom, if it responds to our shalom. It's like, you know, almost like give us a bounce. We put our, our, our fists out to bounce and they give us a shalom bounce, so to speak, right? It gives an ants of shalom and opens up. That city, she opens up to us, right? It shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries. They shall be tributaries, mis, mas. Right? They should be a gang or body of forced laborers, task work. They should work for us. Now, people say, oh, look at that. You're taking the slavery. There's no slavery there. It's talking about workers. The same thing they did in ancient Egypt, you know, with the Nubians. <laughs> Didn't they do it to Nubians? All you pro-black comedics? Let's be truthful. Right? That's just the way it be like. Right? To the, and they shall serve thee. But notice what happened. Verse 12. And if it make no shalom, it says, lo, shalom, no shalom. It don't respond to our offer of shalom. Right? But will make war against thee, but seeks to make milchama against thee, then thou shalt besiege it, besiege her, sore, sore. That's going to be a sore. We're going to bind, cramp, cripple, paralyze, besiege, cramp, confine, besiege. We're going to show hostility to. We're going to be an adversary to. Yeah, they can call us a satan. In a sense, we will be their adversary and bring adversity. Right? We'll treat them as a foe. Right? That's basic right there to cramp. You know, we say cramp, cripple, and paralyze all weak heart conceptions, wipe them out of creation. This is how we receive Rastafari. That was the word sound of the Rasta Mandem, you know, to I and I and I from such a time. So just to share with the youths. Now, this word sur, where it says besiege, cramp, confine, in many applications. It can be literally, it can be figuratively, formatively, or hostily. Right? It could be formative or hostile. So the spirit, right? So it's that spirit of the word. So being in the spirit to apply the right spirit of the word. Not the letter of the Lord, but the spirit. Right? The ruach. Right? 
So we will be an adversary. We will assault, besiege, and distress, right? So forth and so on. You know what I mean? Basically, right? Then it says right here in verse 13, and when Yahweh Loheka have delivered it, delivered her, that city, that enemy city, right, into thine hands, thou shall smite every male with the edge of the sword. Now, people say, what, 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 what? Oh, my gosh, look what's happening. That's genocide. That's a holocaust. Well, you know, we're talking about back in them days, right? You're talking about the Brit HaYashana. But the spirit of this word still applies in the spiritual warfare. Right? Make no doubts about it. But the woman and the little ones and the cattle and all that's in the city and all the spoil of, it says, Thou shalt thou take to thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thy enemies that Yahuwah Loheka have given thee. So notice, in other places, against those seven nations of Canaan, it's a direct slot. Right? Those nations that continue to squat in the land. Seven. There's only seven, like the seven heads on the beast. Right? There's like even some some of these nations, right? They they know they gotta go, right, in these the end times of the Gentiles. But it says right here concerning other people beside those seven nations. So there's even a difference of rules of engagement against the seven, right, and then against any other nations that we encounter. This is for any other nations besides the seven that we encounter, right? The woman and the children, the cattle they live. But if it's against those nations, any of the seven nations, the rules and regulations was extermination. Either they will get out, right? They'll get the good sense, the good spirit to get out, right? Or they'll be driven out, right? Or they'll be slaughtered. Now, that right there, that's not, that's not pacifism. That's not passivity, right? But the same principle of that is in the New Testament. It's in the New Covenant, right? The same principle of that. Notice how... Yahuwah Eloheinu, right? And how the Moshia, Robeinu Yeshua, right? How he even said, because the children of Israel, or rather the Judeans, the, the black Jews, the, the Yehudi of that time, didn't listen to this, how there would be a judgment, how they would be besieged by the nations, and all of that was appointed by the same Yahweh He Eloheinu, right? Against us when we were off. Right? So now when we are armed, these are our rules and our regulations right? for times of peace right? or for times of war. Right? So here, let's just seal up with Ecclesiastes right? when it says there's a time and a season. Right? And let me put war. Let me just put war right? because here, this Torah portion right here, right? there's a time and a season. There's a time for... Oh, I think he used the word... I think he used the word... Um, 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 yeah, it doesn't use time and season there, right? It doesn't use time and season there. Not there, there, there. Let, let's go right here. Okay, one more. Okay, that was before that. Okay, where are we right here? Time and season. Okay. Okay, where are we? Okay, give me one moment, brothers. There we go. We, we passed over it, right? Ecclesiastes, right? Kohelet, the preacher. Right, Ecclesiastes Hebrews. <laughs> a time to love and a time to hate. Ah, a time of war and a time of peace. See, so the right thing is, and the right question would be, Chabarin, right, my fellow Talmudim, is what time is it? Right, that's the question you have to ask when we talk about, well, what kind of book the Bible is, what kind of book the scripture is. Right, the key question is, well, what time is it? Right? What time is it? What, what sort of time? Are we living in a time that there needs to be you be on the war footing? Are we living in a time that we need to be on the peace footing? Are we living in a time that we need do we need love do we need love and peace or do we need hate and war? Now I know this is hard for some ones and ones, but for us of the royal order, the commandment keepers right here, 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 right? Beit Ha to right? The house of prayer. Right, the house of prayer. So sound the alarm, ring the alarm. You know what I mean? <laughs> ring the alarm, yes I. <laughs> Our enemies should be repentant, and I and I also think differently. So here, 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 brothers and sisters, Shalosha Regalim. I think that says that on the curtain behind them right here. Commandment keepers, congregation, the living God. So here, here, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, just going to our roots right here when we're speaking about the teaching. 
right, to keep the teachings right and accurate. Yes, I. There's some more here we'd like to share and even show right here. But, you know, what sort of book is the scripts? Right, and asking that question. What sort of book, right, is the scriptures? First of all, we need to take a look. Come, let us study. Iron sharpen iron. Right, sabbatical studies here for this Shabbat Shalom. So there's time for war, right? And then there's also those times of times of peace, right? And we, the Beta Israel, right, of the West, right, talk black to I. Talk black, Beta Israel, to I. You know, we approve of this message here. Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom. This is Yadon. Yadon, Ben Chayel, the Hebrew name, Ras Ayadonis, Tafara, L-O-J. The Lion of Judah, Society of His Majesty. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. Like, share, and subscribe. Give thanks. Rastafari. Tune in, tune in, tune in. Sabbatical studies. Shabbat strong. Rastafari Israelites. That's right. Yes, sir.